Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And for today's video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about all the various armaments on USS the Sullivans, our Fletcher class destroyer. And so it really starts with the 5 inch 38 that's behind me right here. Right, so with the 5 inch 38s, they would have all been along the center line. Right, and there would have been five of them. Currently, uh, USS the Sullivans has four, but I'll talk about that uh, later in the video. So these 5-inch 38s were dual purpose. All right, they could fire at uh, targets in the air and land-based or surface-based targets as well. All right, they'd be able to, a really good, well-trained gun crew would be able to fire anywhere from, say, 15 to 22 rounds per minute out of this barrel. And they'd be able to go about 10 miles. Now, for the projectile itself, it was a proximity a fuse, so it didn't actually have to hit a plane or an object. What it would do is it would sense that it was around a plane or an object in the sky and then it would detonate and you'd hope that the shrapnel would then uh, hit the target. All right, so when you see movies like Midway and things and you see all those black poofs of, of uh, clouds in the sky, those are probably the 5 inch 38s exploding, releasing um, the shrapnel and then you're hoping that you're actually hitting a plane. All right, now these barrels could elevate up to 85 degrees. All right, so that's almost completely perpendicular to the turret itself. All right, and again, from there, they'd be able to go anywhere from uh, 7 to 10 miles, all right, to hit a target. All right, there'd be about uh, 7 or 8 or 9 crew in there, and certainly from the lower handling room, they would be bringing up all of the uh, projectiles and the 25 pound uh, gunpowder casings. Now at the very top, let's see, over there, all right, would be the gun captain. All right, so the gun captain would be, like to say, the final lookout. But typically what would happen is the, the gun director would then signal down to the gun plot. They would put all of the information of elevation, range, uh, of the enemy in there, and then these would move electronically. All right, they could also move manually if electronic power was cut. All right, but these were the workhorses of the Fletcher class, and therefore the U.S. Navy in World War II. All right, we're going to check out some more armament. Follow me. All right, the next armament on USS the Sullivans I'm going to cover are these Orlikans here, these 20 millimeter twin barreled Orlikans. Now in her original configuration, when she was uh, commissioned, she would have had 7 to 10 Orlikans single barrel and double barreled uh, on her. And then of course they changed that throughout the war and certainly after because again, USS the Sullivans was in service until 1965. So by 1965, all of the Orlikans were removed off of USS the Sullivans, and then they had derivatives of that throughout the time before 19, from 1943 to 1959. Now these had a really high rate of fire. You'd be able to fire about 240 to 300 rounds per minute. They would have had the clips which would have had 60 each, and so they were, the, uh, the gun crews were pulling them in and out uh, relatively quickly, and the barrels would get pretty hot. So these would be able to travel about 4,800 yards, all right, at a speed of about 2,700 feet per second. And, right, the mileage, if you want to convert the yards to mileage, they'd be able to go about 2.5 miles at a stable velocity to do some damage on uh, the incoming Japanese aircraft, say for World War II. But these were also kind of the last line of defense because they would be the smallest caliber 
So certainly you'd be firing the 5 inch 38s, which I've talked about. Then you're firing off the Bofors, and then you're firing off the Orlikins as the enemy gets closer. All right, so right now we have on display four Orlikins, four twin mounted Orlik, uh, Orlikins that you can see when you come aboard. But even here on the Fantail, she would have had a big tub and a shield, and that would have had three of these in her original uh, configuration. And then there would have been three along each port and starboard side uh, along the aft superstructure. Let's go check out those 40 millimeter Bofors. Now I'm standing on the O1 level and we're looking at these wonderful twin barreled 40 millimeters uh, Bofors. All right, and so the, the O1 level, there's one here on port, there's one here on starboard. We are in between the stacks. All right, the forward stack and right in front of me here is the aft stack. All right, and this would have been also, it's part and parcel with the torpedoes. So USS the Sullivans had two quintuple torpedo mounts. I'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, but they removed one of the quintuples during her 45 refit. And they moved the Bofors that were right under the bridge on the O1 level. So just forward of here, underneath the uh, pilot house and the bridge area. Moved them here more towards uh, the center line or the midship. And then they installed the hedgehogs where the Bofors were. So they removed the torpedoes, moved the Bofors, put the hedgehogs. <laughs> All right, it can be very confusing. And even, uh, you know, for me who reads up on this stuff, it's okay, what refit was that again? Was it 45? Was it 51? Was it 59? Because they always are reconfiguring. And then that's the way you see her today. All right, but for these Bofors, all right, these were twin mounted. Uh, and I'm, I'll mention later in the video that there is one on the O2 level as well. But these would be able to travel about 11,000 yards or about 6,000 miles. Now these had a pretty high rate of fire at about 160 to 200 rounds per minute. All right, firing out of both uh, the twin barrels. All right, so it's a higher caliber than the 20 millimeter, not as high as the five inch, obviously, not as high as the three inch, 50. All right, but she could do some serious damage at firing 160 that can go uh, about six miles. All right, so if you're thinking of the ring of defense, five inch, 40 millimeter Bofors, 20 millimeters, and certainly you sparkle in the uh, three inch 50 there, you have a really nice uh, wall of steel and defense for uh, your ship. I think now is the time to talk about those torpedoes though, so follow me. Now we're standing at on the center line between the forward and uh, the forward superstructure and the aft superstructure right aft of the uh, aft funnel as well. And if you see this ring right here, that is the remnants of one of those uh, quintuple torpedoes. All right, so they were the Mark 14s and Mark 15 mounts, and they fired the Mark 15 uh, 21 inch torpedoes that were developed in 1935. All right, these were removed uh, at various times. The, f the forward quintuple tube was removed earlier than this, uh, than this uh, quintuple uh, between the forward and the aft uh, superstructure, but that was removed in 1959. All right, so these would, uh, the difference between the Mark 14 mount and the Mark 15 mount would have been uh, a little changes to some of the blast shielding and some of the uh, mechanisms. After the 1959 refit and all of the quintuples were gone, what they did was they added these triples. So you'll see that right there. 
So when you come to USS The Sullivans today, you're going to be looking at these uh, triples that were added in 1959. And these were the Mark 32s uh, mounts that carried the Mark 44 anti-submarine warfare uh, torpedoes. To the best of my knowledge, she never used her torpedoes in the Pacific. Right, that was certainly much more of a threat uh, in the Atlantic with the uh, German submarine U-boat threat. All right, so they removed both of these quintuples at different times. As I just mentioned with the Bofors, they moved the Bofors to where the forward quintuple tubes were. And then the circle you saw on the deck was removed in 1959 to be replaced by these, uh, by these triple uh, Mark 32s. All right, we're gonna head, we're gonna head elsewhere, and we're gonna talk about the depth charges and the hedgehogs. So what you're looking at behind me is the hedgehog system uh, that was added probably, I believe, in her 1959 refit. All right, and what these were was they were a little more updated uh, depth charges. All right, so this is the Mark 10. 7.2-inch uh, uh, hedgehog system, and as I was just mentioning with the Bofors, stay with me everybody, this is where the Bofors were, right underneath the bridge here, and those were moved to midship and replaced with these hedgehogs. Alright, so what these would do is these would be on a spigot system, alright, and they would, it would rotate and it would fire an elliptical pattern that could cover about 140 uh, feet by 120 feet in this elliptical pattern. All right, so you're getting much wider range uh, with these hedgehogs than you would be just dropping uh, the depth charges off of the release rack, uh, which I'll show you in a little bit. All right, so the way they protected itself a little bit was the, the hedgehogs with the highest trajectory would uh, be fired first, and then ones with a lower pr uh, trajectory would be fired last. And so what it did is it made this really cool pattern in the water. I'm not minimizing it, but it, it looks really interesting to see it go do 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 right? <laughs> All right, and these were contact, right? So unlike the depth charges that I'll be talking about in a little bit that would be set to a certain depth and then explode, these had to actually make contact with a submarine or an underwater object for, uh, for the uh, pin to be fired and uh, for it to explode. All right, so again, we're on the 01 level right under the bridge. There's this one on port, and we also had one on starboard where the 40 millimeter Bofors used to be. So let's go check out the different uh, K-gun and depth charge racks. Now I'm standing on the very stern of USS The Sullivans and we're looking at these Mark III release tracks. All right, during World War II she would have had uh, two of them. We're looking at the starboard one. She would have had one over here on port as well. And you could still see some of the mounting uh, pins and things for the port side. But after her 59 refit, uh, they only kept the starboard one. All right, so again, these are the Mark III release tracks, and what they would have done is dropped the Mark VI and the Mark VII depth charge. All right, so you have a pistol inside, uh, you set the depth, and when the, uh, you know, when the charge reaches that depth, it just explodes. Now really, through testing, what they wanted to do was get within 30 feet of a submarine, which would cause catastrophic uh, damage when it set off. So if they could get these charges within 30 feet of a submarine, it would be pretty catastrophic. When you head out 60 feet, 90 feet, you're doing some damage, but it wouldn't actually uh, break the integrity of the submarine to where it might sink. All right, we got to check out those uh, K-guns, uh, depth charges, and so we'll do that and follow me. 
Okay, so you saw the release tracks for the depth charges on the stern of USS The Sullivans. Now what we're looking at here is the K-Gun, which is another depth charge that would be able to take the, take the depth charge itself and propel it and launch it off the side of the ship. And again, for the depth charges on the stern, Mark 6 and Mark 7s, and these at Mark 7s, teardrop shape. This would be for uh, ASW, anti-submarine warfare. And so you would have three on port, three on starboard, and that also then uh, frees up the center line on the O1 level, um, say with the torpedo racks. So what this would do is this would take this teardrop shaped, it wasn't just the regular barrel shaped, it would take this teardrop, propel it off, and so you'd have, you could have three launching from here, two being pushed and rolled off the stern, three going off of starboard, and so you can create a nice U-shaped pattern as you are steaming forward. All right, so these were teardrop shaped probably just for the aerodynamics of them. Uh, I'm sure they did launch uh, just those, those uh, steel barrel type depth charges, but here as the example that we use is more of a teardrop shape like a, like a bomb, you know, like an air uh, plane release bomb or something like that. So again, we are combating every threat here on USS The Sullivans not only just in World War II, but then again across time from 43 to 65. All right, we have one more armament to talk about, the 3-inch 50 cal, and so we're going to do that, and follow me. All right, so what we have here is the last armament that I'll talk about, the 3-inch 50 cal on USS The Sullivans. Now, what... Um, the best vantage point for that is to actually stand on the USS Little Rock and you really get a great view from the fantail. Okay, so the 3 inch 50 you'll see is on the O2 level. All right, and for all of World War II, that was where a 40 millimeter Bofor would have been. But towards the end of the war in the refit, they changed it out to a 3 inch 50 because of that kamikaze threat. The 3 inch 50 cals would be able to kind of take care of those kamikazes and once they hit a kamikaze it would be able to shred the plane a little bit more than the Bofur. Alright so again in 1945 in August this is uh, part of her 45 refit which is why she was stateside and not in the Pacific when the Japanese surrendered. What you'll also see here is over my right shoulder is the revamped gun director and the ready service locker. All right, so as I was mentioning with the 5 inch 38s, there would have been five along the center line. Ours was removed to increase the space for that, uh, the gun director for the 3 inch 50 and also the ready service locker um, where the ammunition was stored. All right, so for the 3 inch 50, these would be able to travel about eight miles at, uh, at a set velocity. All right, so now you're, you're really packing a punch with these three inch 50 shells at about eight miles away. All right, so when you come here, you will see the three inch 50, but really the best way of looking at it is from the USS Little Rock, and that was part of her first refit in 45. And that's also why you'll see she only has four 5 inch 38s because they removed it for uh, the 3 inch 50. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned a lot about the firepower Fletcher class could put up. Alright, it was for anti submarine work, it was for anti air work, alright, shooting down planes, shooting at other uh, similar classed vessels. It was also for bombarding the shore and the beachheads. So really they covered every single threat in the Pacific uh, with all of the armaments that you see on board. So if you like this video, please subscribe, ring the bell, check out our uh, other social media pages, and as always, thank you for your support for the Sullivans and uh, for all of our vessels here at the Buffalo Naval Park, and we'll see you again soon.